Hey there, it's day three out of 30, on our 30 for 30 of the meaning and significance of the resurrection of Jesus. And today I want to ask you, what is the chief article of the Christian religion? And it's no surprise probably, because this is a series about the resurrection, that I would say that it is the resurrection. And I think it's not just my opinion, but many uh, hold the same opinion that the chief article of our religion and our faith is the resurrection of Jesus. It is the principal way we see the glory and the power and the beauty of our God uh, in history. So let's look at what the Scots Confession from 1560, written principally by John Knox, had to say about the resurrection. A real, real brief summary of what it means uh, in this resurrection. So here it is. It says, we undoubtedly believe, now we're going to talk about that, undoubtedly believe in the coming days about, you know, hey, this is hard to believe and we're going to interact with it. But at the end of the day, we believe this undoubtedly uh, because we, uh, of who God has made us to be. Uh, we didn't come at this on our own, but God uh, worked his grace in us so that we couldn't help but believe this uh, if, if we're in him. So we undoubtedly believe, since it was impossible that the sorrows of death should retain in bondage the author of life, Jesus, that our Lord, having been crucified, dead, and buried, descended into hell. And then he did rise again for our justification. This is, again, justification is the central doctrine. If you don't know what that is, ask me, comment, let's talk about that. But the resurrection and Jesus being risen from the dead is for our justification and for the destruction of him who is the author of death. So this is the overcoming of Satan. What did it do? It brought life again to us that were subject to death and its bondage. So that is all the first sentence here. Now, sentence two, we know that his resurrection was confirmed by the testimony of his enemies and by the resurrection of the dead whose supercholars or tombs were opened. And that's, that's in Matthew uh, 27. You can look that up. Um, and they rose and appeared to many within the city of Jerusalem. So uh, within the resurrection uh, of Jesus, when that happened, there was a great earthquake-like uh, thing going on, an angel, and there were other tombs open, other saints uh, milling around in Jerusalem and seen by people. It was also confirmed in sentence 3 here, uh, by the testimony of his angels and by the senses and judgment of his apostles who witnessed it and witnessed Christ and others, it says, who had conversation with him and ate and drank with him after his resurrection. Very clearly historical, a lot of evidence, and and that just to, to say that it's uh, bogus evidence is just to say you're, you're prejudiced against the evidence. The evidence is there. Uh, and if you if you were to to take the scriptures and and, and treat them the way many scholars uh, who disbelieve in the resurrection treat them, then we would have literally no credibility to believe anything uh, in ancient history, uh, you know, before before and after Christ. We we wouldn't have any reason if we were to take all of our evidence and and and, and do it the way some scholars do with the documents of Scripture. So, we're going to look at, again, a lot of ways we're going to be challenged in the coming days on the topic of resurrection. But we're going to do that because it's important. We have to know that we know that we know this, and we have to really doubt our doubts and call one another to doubt our doubts in this if it is so important, if it is the chief article of our of our faith. So the key things that Knox wants to highlight in the Scott Confession is that it brings victory over death, over the enemy, uh, and it brings life to those who are united to Christ. And it was uh, roundly testified by, by all the events surrounding the resurrection and all those who saw the resurrected Christ. And so we have undoubted uh, reason to believe it. So 
There you go. That's the Scott's Confession on the Resurrection. I hope that's helpful to you guys. You can easily Google this and look it up in many, many collections of creeds of the church. But one great way to look at what the Bible teaches is to look at creeds uh, and to see the, the meaning and significance uh, that this doctrine has always held. We're looking at documents that are uh, 500 uh, years old uh, and, and th they're dealing with the same things we're dealing with. So it's very instructive to look at those creeds from the ancient uh, church and see how those help us today. All right. Hope that's helpful to you. We'll be catching up with you again again soon. This is day three out of 30 on the 30 for 30. We're looking at the meaning and significance of the resurrection. Uh, as you prep and prime to worship Jesus, we hope we get to worship together in person. Uh, with coronavirus going on, who knows what's going to happen. Everything's kind of up in the air. But as you're getting ready, do know that we are meeting as a church on April 12th, 1030 a.m., 324 West Main Street here in Norman, Oklahoma. God bless. Talk to you later.